In this video, we're going to talk about how to configure PHP. We're going to do it via a settings file called php.ini. I'm going to show you how to locate this file, how to work with this file, and then finally how to make any changes we make to this file take effect. So step one, we need to locate our PHP any file. And it's very important we locate the exact file that our server is using, because sometimes servers will have different PHP any configuration files uh, that it might be using in different circumstances. So we want to make sure we are working with the right file. And the best way to figure out which file your server is using is to have your server output the results of a built-in function called PHP info. This is going to output a whole bunch of information from your server. You can see a screenshot of it here. Uh, and one of the things included in this output is the path to your loaded configuration file. This is the path we want to be looking for. So to see this in action, I'm going to switch over to command line. I'm currently in the directory of where I've got a local server running on this computer. It's running Apache. It's running PHP. And within this directory in the server, I'm just going to create a temporary file called example. Uh, just to quickly generate it, I'll use the command line editor nano. So we're going to say nano example.php. Within this file, I'll lay out a PHP opening tag, and then I'll just invoke that built-in PHP info function. And that's it. That's all I need in this file. I'm going to save my changes by holding down Control X, uh, typing Y to confirm I want to save these changes, and then enter to persist the changes. So now in the browser, let me switch over to my tab where I'm running the local server. I'm going to load up that example.php file that I just created. And there we go. There's all our PHP info. So scrolling through this, I want to go down to the section loaded configuration file and copy the path to the PHP any file that the server is running. Uh, now let's open this file up and take a look at it. Coming back to command line, uh, I could open it in nano, but um, I'm going to open it in my code editor just to make it a little bit easier to work with. So I'm using VS Code so I can use the code shortcut followed by the path to quickly open it. And the first thing you'll observe is a bunch of lines that are all prefixed with a semicolon, which is how we leave comments in this PHP any file. So any line with a semicolon at the beginning is going to be ignored. And you can see that there's uh, comments liberally throughout this file explaining how the file works, all the different settings, all the different options. Um, and of course, you can add your own comments as needed. Uh, but eventually, if you scroll down, you'll get to some of the actual settings. So these lines here without a semicolon at the beginning, these are where we're defining our directives or our settings within this file. Uh, and the syntax is just the name of the directive equals some value. right? So for example, here's the short open tag directive, and it is currently set to off. And if we look at the comments that come before it, it explains everything we need to know about this particular directive, including what different settings we could um, set its value to. So you can skim through and see the different directives that are available and what they control. Uh, but for a specific example, I want to focus in on a directive that I often find myself working with in PHP any files, and it's called upload max file size. So I'm going to go ahead and search for it in this file. And you can see it's currently set to two megabytes, which uh, depending on what I'm allowing users to upload on my site, this might be too restrictive. Uh, for example, let's say I'm asking users to upload PDFs or video files. Uh, chances are they're going to be bigger than two megabytes. So I want to increase this limit. Uh, and let's say something like uh, 50 megabytes. Um, now, in addition to upload max fi uh, file size, there's also a setting for your max uh, post size. And you want to make sure that this is the same or larger than your upload max file size, just because the post uh, process is what is going to actually allow the upload to happen. Uh, so I'm going to up this up to fi uh, 50 megabytes just to match what I had set for the uh, max upload. All right, so that's just an arbitrary example of a setting change you might make. And obviously, to make these changes take effect, the first thing we need to do is save the changes to our PHP any file. So I'm going to do that. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to get my server to recognize these changes. And how you do that is going to depend on the server type that you're working with. Here on my local server where I'm running this via XAMPP, I'm just going to bring up the XAMPP interface and just prompt it to restart Apache. And that should make the change take effect. So I can see Apache is running again. And the way that I can check that that setting change actually took effect is coming back to my browser in this PHP info page. If I refresh this, and then scroll down. Any of my directives that were set in that any file should be reflected here as well. So let's go ahead and search in here for upload max file size. And perfect, we could see it's set to 50 megabytes. We can also search for our um, 
our uh, post max size setting, and that's also set to 50. So that's the basic procedure for a standard Apache server. Uh, some different servers have some different procedures though. And just to demonstrate this, I have another server. This is actually a live server I've got running that is running uh, Nginx instead of Apache. And the PHP handler that's being used here is a little bit different, such that when we make setting changes, it's not enough to just restart the server. We also have to get our PHP handler to reload the settings. To show you what I mean, let's go through that process of first getting a PHP info invocation running on this server. So in my case, I'm gonna go back to command line. I'm gonna switch over to the tab where I'm currently connected to the server. And once again, I'll just use nano to create an example.php file. And then within this file, I will output uh, PHP info. Save those changes. And then let's pull that up in the browser. And just to observe the difference uh, on the first server we're working with coming back to the top, the section under server API, this is which uh, indicating which PHP handler we're using. So in this case, it was the Apache 2.0 handler, and it was enough just to restart Apache to make the changes take effect. On this other server, this Nginx server, our PHP handler or server API is uh, this FPM or fast CGI handler. And in this case, we need to explicitly reload the settings for that handler to make any changes take effect. To do that, I wanna to refer to the notes that accompany this video because I have a command here we're gonna use for this. So coming down to the section under updating configs, we're now going through example two where we're looking at an Nginx server running the PHP handler FPM. And this is the command we're gonna run. Uh, in my case, we're running the FPM version 8.1 because looking at my output, you could see that's the version of PHP I'm working with. If you were working with a different version, say 8.0, then you would just wanna update your command accordingly uh, here. But in my case, I can copy exactly as it is in the notes. And actually before I run that, I'm getting ahead of myself, let's actually make a setting change so we can see a take effect. So coming back to PHP info, again, we'll find the path to our PHP any file on this server. And this time I'm gonna open it directly in command line via nano, just because I don't have my code editor tapped into the server. And also because on this live server to edit our PHP any file, we need admin privileges. So the quickest way I could do that is just use nano, but I'm gonna prefix the new uh, nano command with a sudo command. So we'll execute this as an admin. So let's say sudo nano, and then we'll paste in the path to our any file. This will ask me for my admin password on the server. So I'll type that in. For security reasons, it's not gonna actually output what I'm typing, but if I hit enter and everything went well, it should open that PHP any file. Uh, so just like we did on the local server, I'm gonna make a couple setting changes. So I'm gonna search for the uh, upload max file size. And on this server, it's currently set to 40 and let's just bump that up to 50. I'm also going to search for post max size. And that's also set to 40, and I'm also going to bump that up to 50. All right, so with those setting changes in place, let me exit out of Nano. And now we're at the point where we need to reload that PHP handler to get these changes to take effect. So going back to our notes, I'm going to copy this command again. Run that. It is going to ask for my admin password once again, so I'll enter that and hit enter. All right, and that should be good. Let's go back to our PHP info page and just confirm that those settings took effect. So I'm gonna refresh this and search for upload max file size and perfect, that's showing 50 megabytes. And we're also going to search for post max size and that's also reading at 50 megabytes. So just to recap, this Nginx based web server is using FPM fast CGI as its PHP handler. So to get any setting changes to take effect, we have to reload that handler. Uh, in the first example, we were dealing with a local server running Apache. In that case, the PHP handler was the Apache 2.0 handler. It was enough just to restart the server entirely to get those settings to take effect. And in that case, I was using XAMPP, so I could just use the interface to reset it. If you're dealing with a live server, you're not working with XAMPP, uh, I do have some reference in the notes for that. This is example one with Apache. Here's the command you would run uh, to restart your server there and get the changes to take effect.